Oh, all right. Now I recognize you. My eyesight's starting to fail me, man. Sorry about that. Anyway, welcome back. I'm glad you're here. I'm here. You know what I'm saying? It takes two to tango, so let's tango it out, man. Let's dance, man. Let's dance. You know, all these little, little tiny little, little bells ring. There's bells ring. I'm gonna tell you this story about ukulele. Ukulele. Right? We're gonna get into it. Because I have a special surprise that befell me this morning, man. Swap meat, man. Swap meat aroni, man. Swap meat aronius, man. So, this guitar right here is a quattro made in Venezuela, you know, on the Isla Margarita. Isla Margarita was where Simon Bolivar staged all the the troops that came from, like, Britain. You know what I mean? To overthrow the Spanish forces in South America, just so you know. Anyway, I was there. And there's a guy that made them right there. I think it even says the guy's name. It says, The Sale of Cuatros, Ramon Gaona. Street 13C with 56. The bar, bark me some metal, some shit like that, man. My daughter, my youngest daughter, loved this guitar. Even though I got this like 20 years ago, pretty much I hung in my studio until my youngest daughter was born. And she was, you know, just all daddy walking around town, the guitar all over the place. So she's like, I'm going to take that one. I was like, okay, and I gave it to her. And one day I found it in the corner, broke it into like six pieces with all kinds of vitamin tablets stuck in it, man. Hey, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what to say. It was a true story. Anyway, I did repair it, but this was a quattro. Now, it's not really a ukulele proper. Strings on it are like fishing lines. You know, I remember when I was in South America that first time then, you know, 2002, whatever it was. I didn't really have that much fun playing it, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't really that good. It wasn't a good instrument, really. It was just sort of like my introduction to that kind of thing. Now, this is my first and only ukulele up to today's date. And I got this because about like eight years ago, seven years ago, something like that. I was at Thanksgiving my family, my aunt's house down in South Jersey. You remember Tommy D? The legendary owner of the Wigwam from South Jersey. He had all the guitars around, you know what I mean, in the living room. And I saw this little ukulele. And he wasn't around yet, you know what I mean? It was just we were the early birds, you know. I'm getting older, so I was like the early bird at that point, man. So we came in. I was playing a couple of little guitars, like, blah, 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 you know what I mean, in front of the family and stuff. I seen this little ukulele, and I'm like, ooh, bring, bring. I was like, this is pretty cool, man. And then he materialized. He's like, ooh, you like the ukulele? I was like, no, nah, I don't even know anything about it. He's like, you should accustom yourself self with a ukulele. It's, it's, very, it's a brilliant instrument, he said to me. So there's a brilliant instrument. So what he, what he told me, those the words he used. So I saw a flea market, I don't know, a couple months after that, this. This is a Kayla, it's like made out of fine woods in China, I think. It's a pretty good ukulele, you know what I'm saying? I paid 10 bucks for it. It's the only one I've had this whole time, you know what I mean? I like to play, I, I'll go like through spurts, like I'll pick it up, I'll play it for like a couple days and I won't touch it for another year. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? All through the ages, that's pretty much my relation with the ukulele. And I never really at the swap meet came across any real serious opportunities to better my collection of string instruments of the ukulele type. It just never happened. It never behooved myself. This morning I get to the flea market, man. I'm walking around. I'll give you a simulation how I walk around as this goes on. You know, I went to the other side of the table like this. Let's me looking around the tables, you know what I'm saying? I want you to see full effect, man, you know what I'm saying? In case some of you people are still like deep inside of your quarantine, man. That's what it looked like at the flea market while we just out of here, man. Anyway, so I heard the guys like, you know what I mean? How much on this ukulele? I'm like, he's like, he's like five bucks a piece on what's, on what's remaining is what he said, on what's remaining. 
Like, do, 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 Grabbing shit for people already have in their hands. Like, that's fine, motherfucker. Files of peace, you know what I mean? I'm putting them all in the basket. Like, don't touch that shit, you motherfucker. Kicking people in their faces and shit. You know, it sounds like Steven Seagal grabbing those motherfuckers up. Taekwondo, man. You know, fucking purple belt, man. Anyway, so, you know what I'm saying? He's like, I like your style, Bobby G. I'm like, that's right. So what do I owe you? And he's like, give me, give me 30 boxes. Money, I'm walking around this big fucking bucket on my head like I'm in fucking subtropic Africa. I was even singing a subtropic sub African Africa song. A minute, a minute, going through the flea market with this big old tub on my head, man. She was on, incredible, man. So I'm gonna flip you around. We'll look at it on the floor right behind me, and we're to sort it out. I haven't even sorted it out. I don't even know what I got yet. And then I'll decide which one I'm gonna restore. And then if I get a couple comments and you want to see one restored, leave a comment below. I'll restore it if a couple of people ask for the same one. Or if a couple of people ask for one and another, I got a whole bunch of them, man. I got a whole fucking box of them, man. A whole tub, I should say, man. I'm going to flip you around because I know, I know you want to see it. You want to see it? I'm going to show you. <laughs> so here we are, folks. We got a huge, huge tape. Of ukuleles, man. I haven't even counted how many they're in here, believe it or not, man. Saving it all for you. I haven't even really looked at it. I looked at it briefly at the swap meeting and just like, holy shit. You know what I mean? It was all 30 bucks, man. Seems like it's bottomless, man. It's a huge, you know what I mean? It's a huge thing, man. It's a big boy, man. I'll get out the yardstick so you can see, man. You know what I'm saying, man? It's a big old, big old tub, man. It's a big old tub, right? You know what I'm saying? That ain't metric, people. You know what I'm saying? It's a big old fucking tub, man. Straight, straight old craziness going on in there, man. So let's see what we got, man. I saw some plastic ones in there. There's all kinds of stuff missing. You know what I mean? Let's check this out. One by one, I'm just going to pull them out randomly. Lay them on the table. Here's the first one. Plastic ukulele TV palette says. You see that? Do you see it? I don't know if you can see it. It's the way this thing is all humped up there, man. It's got all of its pegs. That's cool, man. That's an easy fix, man. I like that. It's just got some cracks in the plastic, if you can see, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like everything else is ready to rock and roll on this guy, man. Put him away, man. He's my pal, man. I like plastic instruments too. It's all plastic, everything. Here's a wooden harmony. Hey man, we we'll always talk about harmony, man. No pegs. It's got his nut. We see that the fingerboard is even with the uh, with the top. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's unusual. Missing the bridge like most of them. Loose wood, man. Made in Chicago, you can tell that. You know what I'm saying? That slap shot, the harmony style, man. The harmonious people, man. Put the wooden one on this side, man. The plastic one on that side. There's another wooden one. Look at that. Another harmony. Again, it's got the nut, but this one's got a uh, plastic fingerboard, plastic raised fingerboard. The last one had like a little rosewood one. You see that? Plastic fingerboard. I'm saying early 50s on this one. 50s? Old school, man. So that other one must be like a 40s on right after the war, man. Ukuleles weren't really popular that much after the war. The boomers didn't really take to it, man. They took the guitar, man. Was one for the money. Bunch of little dot markers missing on there, man. So this is a nice one, man. I like that, man. Let's see what else we got in this little... Ooh. Flamingo, look at this guy. He's got all his little pegs, man. Do you see that, man? 
These plastic ones are actually pretty good shape, man. These are all, like, I think, 50s. You know what I mean? Maybe 40s. TV pals with TV first star, you can tell, you know what I mean? They're just milking it. Yeah, this is perfect. There's nothing wrong with this one. There's a little crack here. You see that? Right there, man. It's all cracked up to be. Plastic fingerboard and everything. Flamingo, man. This is like late 40s. Early 50s, man. All plastics, man. Convincing job, though, man. A nice little piece, man. A little crack running around this guy. See there? Uh, pissing my fucking coffee, man. Pissing my coffee, man. I'm cracked on the back, man. These are all like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the garbage ones, you know what I mean? Hey, that's what I like, man. Look at this guy. Wooden, no namer. He's got a nice rosewood board. This is an old guy. Missing the nut. He's got a peg and a peg that's broken. You know what I'm saying? A little like a uh, anonymous guy, you know what I'm saying? This guy's kind of anonymous, man. I don't know what's what was it what's going on him. Older, you know what I'm saying, forties probably, vintage. Who the fuck knows, man. You know what I'm saying? That one's probably not gonna get ever restored, man. You know what I'm saying? That's your only get kid airtime, motherfucker. Enjoy it. Bitch. Flamingo, another one. We can do it. Just do this. Yes, we did a plastic one that was like almost reverse color. This one, yes. Do you see that? Do you see those chip, man? You can see them better than this. They're naked, man. Almost naked, anyway. Fucking crazy, man. All its pegs too. See that? Got a little crack going in here. It's a little cracked up, man. Other than that, though, man, I don't see anything around the sides or anything, man. This looks like a. Looks like it's in pretty good condition, man. Pretty good condition, man. That's unusual about the plastic ones. We're getting like too many here on the fucking on the slab, man. Gotta slow down, man. Take this little guy out, man. That's another TV pal. See that? TV pal. Little guy, man. You get, man. No TV first came out, man. See that, man? See that crack, man? See that crack and shit, man. Sorry, man. I don't know. I can't really see the little monitor, man. It just has that crack, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's pretty conspicuous, though, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, it's not crack, man. Like, where are you? Fucking dicky. Sorry about that. Boys are getting too crowded, man. Too crowded, man. There's another plastic guy. He's like a no namer. Missing a peg. But it doesn't seem to have any cracks. I don't see any cracks at all in this one. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a no namer piece of shite. All plastic. I'm just missing a peg, really. What can I say about this guy? What a treasure. What a treasure to hold. What a treasure to hold. I wonder if I could take parts off of this guy and push it on one of the other ones, man. Think about it, man. Think about it. Think about it, man. Well, this is last, but certainly not last. Kingston, man. We know Kingston, man. We know Kingston, man. We talked about Kingston before. Right? Not like a normal trade board? I believe in something like that. Something like that, man. I'll have to do some more, more research, man. Get my my learn back on, man. I wasn't prepared, because this just truly is a real unboxing. Missing one of the these Novu pegs, man. You know what I'm saying, man? Missing one of them, man. You're fucking done. You're done, Jake off. Check off, man. So, that's it, man. See that? It's empty. It's got some little... Odds and sides in there, man. Let's take a look, man. I'm gonna take you off this camera. We're trying to do this whole thing live, man. Try to do this whole fucking piece live, man. You see that, man? Nothing but broken shit left in there. Man. It's an old, like, cello peg, man. The real musician's musician, man. 
So here it is, man. The slab is all slob, man. Did you slob up the slab? Yes, I did. And I enjoyed it too, son. You see that? You see it? See when you dig it? I can definitely dig it, people. Lots of them. How many you got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine old ukuleles. So what we're going to do now, Fogles and Jogles and Friends of All Nature, is we're going to order some parts to put together one ukulele. And we're going to order everything off of AliExpress. And we're going to judge the different sellers. And we're going to count the time, the modern time that it now takes to get a package in from China. And we'll review the shop, the quality of it, the price of it. Everything will be reviewed. So that's the next videos we're going to see, man. Order just enough parts to put together a couple of ukuleles. And the rest of this video, we're just, you know, in the meantime, Bob G's going to think about it, look at these guys, study them, and think about repairing one for this week, man. You know what I'm saying? I'll get one of these guys up to shape by the end of this episode. And you guys can look at this episode, man, and think about it. And if there's one that you want to see repaired that I didn't do, leave a comment, man. You know what I'm saying? If enough people leave some comments, I'll do some of the ones that you request to do. Otherwise, I'll stay in the tub. You know what I mean? And when I kick, there'll be a whole bunch of, you know what I mean? Ukuleles that are all fucking half broken, man. At least we'll get two or three if you make some comments, man. I'm begging for interaction. I'm begging for it. I got nothing else to do, people. Nothing else to see. So, we're going to wait for the parts. Check them out. Review them as they come in. And after that, you know, I'll, I'll see you on the slab again with, with the victim, man. With this week's victim. So this is it, man. The ukulele horde, man. Ukulele horde, part one, man. Ukulele horde and AliExpress ukulele parts review. To be continued. Peace be with you. <laughs> All right, folks. So it's been a scant seven days since we ordered these uke parts off of AliExpress. Only seven days, people. Went to the mailbox today. Saw this big bulky package in there. And I thought to myself, this can't be any uke parts. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was another, you know, bunch of stuff that I ordered a while back, but two months ago. It was so bulky. I was like, it's got to be those old parts, you know? It can't be any uke parts. So I cut the bottom of the package off, took a quick peer in there. And I think this is actually one of those uke parts we ordered. I really do. We'll find out for, for true right now, man, you know, in our sort of, sort of quasi unpackaging here. Now, this package came so quickly because it was sent to me by President Kennedy, who is there still representing New York, Jamaica, everything I read. Oh, I don't ever recall ever sending him a package. Did you get my package, Marilyn? You like my package? <laughs> so let's take a look inside here, man. See if I'm correct, man. See if this is one of them uke parts, man. Bubble wrap, man. <laughs> I got a whole roll of little bubble wrap for all my little tiny ukes. There it is, man. The main event. Yeah. Five rosewood bridges. You see that? It's like one's kind of a different rosewood. But they're all nice. They all look good. You can screw these on, glue these on. They look to be good. Doesn't look like we got any. Any clunkers in here? Looks beautiful, man. So I'm gonna call that a success, man. This came from Naomi Music, the bridges. It was a grand total of ten dollars and forty-six cents. That's including packaging and taxing and shipping. All oh, that's wonderful, fine stuff. So there it is, man. Victory one, man. I hope this is an indicator of things to come as as far as package speed goes. You know what I'm saying? I'll see you when we get package two in, man. Until then, take it peaceful, man. Era, take it peaceful. And remember, always buy your guitars parts off of Jack Kennedy. All right, folks. We're 33 days out. Can you believe that? 33 days out. That first package we got, seven days. And that was like 30 days later, man. A month later, we ordered this on the 19th of March. Currently April 21st. See, it was shipped a little less than a month ago. And this is the day we got it. Look at this country it comes from, man. From Tuvalu, man. 
Oh, for, for fun of footy. This is from fun of footy in Tuvalu. Isn't that the name of one of the fucking My Little Ponies, man? Tuvalu? F- fun of footy? What country is that, bro? You can see, like, the Chinese label behind there, man. You know what I'm saying? There's all kinds of codes, you know what I mean? One of them behind this is, it must have been two or three countries that this went through, like, four or five places, man. The many journeys of package. Let's open it, man. It's definitely, uh, I don't know if it's the black ones or the white ones, but it's definitely the tuna keys. It even says it here on the custom sheet that this is a string adjuster. String adjuster worth two dollars. I believe that I paid like, you know, about three bucks for this. I'll tell you which store it was from and how much I paid. It's like the last video, man. I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to keep uniform quality, man. Quality control, man. You keep this bag from Tuvalu, man. That's a, that's a collector's item. Scootaloo. Well, look at this. Those are the white ones. Those the white ones. Many packages. The labels are on that package, man. It's a little thick. Cool. So this, the white ones, I got these from Exude Sweat Shop. That's the name of it. Exude Sweat Shop. No shit. Cost $2.99 delivered. And it took 33 days to get here from China. Probably through three different countries, from Tuvalu. I'm not going to open it. You can see it. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm going to use the black ones or the white ones. Maybe the black ones won't come. Maybe we'll have to use the white ones. Be with you, everybody, man. Be with you, everybody. This is an exciting time. I'll see you, I'll see you in the next video, man. In the next arrival. So here we are, like 38 days out. 38. Can't wait, man. 38. Can't wait. Got another package in the mail. This also from our friends over in Tuvalu, man. Getting a lot of packages from Tuvalu, man. The Secret Service would come here. This one looks like it's the black tune and pegs. Looks like it took an additional week to get here because it got stuck somewhere. In the rollers of this cheesy, flimsy packaging. Now, I speculated the last package probably went through three different countries because of all the different labels on it. And this one we can sort of see a little better. That's probably right. This looks like the label from, from our friends in China. They sent it to our friends in Bangkok, Thailand, in the Sonfarumbi Airport. And they sent it to our friends in Tuvalu. And our friends in Tuvalu sent it to me and you, man. Sent it to me and you, man. So let's open it up and just confirm that it is the black ones, man. Get on with our day, man. After this is confirmed, then we're only waiting on those strings. We're only waiting on the strings, man. A couple sets of strings. Man, they are the black ones, man. They look like they're all in good condition, man. Look like they're pretty jive, man. I'll open these, man. I think I could have just sent them together, you know what I'm saying? I, I got another package the other day, all kinds of strings. They're all sent together from different sellers, man. See that, man? Another score, man. Another score and another win. So this package came to us. At a total cost of two dollars and eighty-one cents from the Hiker Store, man. Hiker Store is the name of the merchant on AliExpress, man. Hiker Store, take a hike, Americans. I have to send my package three different country. Peace be with you. I'll see you when we get the strings, man, and then we'll get to assembling one of these beautiful ukuleles. Peace be with you. So we've finally reached the final rung. Of our parts ladder on our AliExpress trial. And we are actually at day number 68. 60 fucking 8. That's despicable. And the reason to wear 68 is because of a very poor seller. And the package in front of you is by no means the reason why we're upset. This is the hero of this package right in front of you. And I'll get to that in a second, man. Now, I ordered these parts on the 18th. Of March, right? From China, from AliExpress. That was the date. Two months went by, you know what I mean? Right around the 18th of June. I checked AliExpress. I was like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? Like over 60 days, nothing. So I look at the, the sale for this particular item, the strings, right? And it says canceled by seller. April 7th. I was like, what? I got no email. I got no message. I got no refund. 
Shame on you, AliExpress, for the no refund. And for the seller. The seller, the original seller, fuck this original seller. That's Cycling Convenience Store. Fuck you, Cycling Convenience Store. That's supposed to be five packs delivered for $4.70. Cancel, motherfucker. You're a piece of shit. You know what I mean? Beware. Don't ever buy from them, man. And fuck you, PayPal, too. PayPal's the new bitch for AliExpress. Now that they got kicked to the curb by their parent company, eBay. Right? Now you got to file a claim through PayPal. You know what I mean? And when you do, it takes like fucking six weeks to get your money back. I haven't even got my money back for 470 And they have proof that I never got it. There's an email from the seller saying cancel. You know what I'm saying? Or a note from the seller. I got no email. That's a clarification, people. So anyway, it pissed me the fuck off. I still didn't get my money back. These scumbags. Cycling convenience store. Fuck you once again. So I ordered a new set of strings. Five packs or whatever it was. From Hey Jude Music Store. $6.79. And that was like seven days ago. Can you believe that? Seven measly days ago. Right? I still didn't run my money back from that bullshit that I ordered on the 18th of March. It was canceled on April 7th. In my mailbox today. That's what I have, man. Also from our friend Jack Kennedy, man. Cycling convenience store. You are no Jack Kennedy. Oh, I always yeah, take care of my constituents in a fast manner. In a fast manner. So if you want to get packages from China within, you know what I'm saying, within a week's time. Hey Jude Music Store, right? That was the, that was the first big one. And what was the first the other one that we had in the beginning? I don't remember. The first one that we got. Man. So those are the ones you're gonna want, man. The two from Jack Kennedy. So let's cut this open. Make sure it is a string. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be like fucking telling tales out of school. I open this up and it's like a fucking pop socket for my daughter. You know what I mean? Oh. So, Fuck hey dude, music store. No, 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 no. Look at that. There they are, man. One, two, three, four, five. Hey, man, why'd you put it in the wrong way? Oh, perfect, man. Look at that. Five sets. Five sets of white nylon ukulele strings. Six dollars. Seventy-nine cents delivered. We got all our parts, man. Isn't that a peaceful thing? President Kennedy, rest in peace, my brother. Rest in peace. Let's put together you, people. Let's do it, man. <laughs> all right, so now we got the parts. We got all of these ukuleles. So let's narrow it down to the one we're going to talk about this week. And there it is, man. The old harmony. Ebony and harmony. 130th anna. Anniversary. That's right, Harmony's 130th anniversary. The first ukulele out of the ukulele horde that we're going to feature is this old Harmony, man. Old-ass Harmony, man. Very old, man. And you know it's just old. It's kind of like, almost designed like some of the oldest guitars in the world, man, if you think about it, man. With the friction pegs and the frets that were right aligned with the top of the guitar. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes they would have frets like coming out in like, like a little... You know what I'm saying? Shape up here for the little... Right on the top of the guitar, man. That's old school, man. Friction pegs and shit, man. Well, I never store them like most of the guitars. You know what I mean? I'll say like 75... 77.16% of those guitars will end up restoring on the show, man. You know, slowly but surely. I'm not going to shove it all down your throat, man. This is the Ukulele Horde Part 1. It's old-ass harmony. Looks to me to be like maybe the... 30s maybe, you know what I'm saying? Late 30s. Right before he went off to fight, and Johnny comes marching home, you know what I'm saying? And the first thing he does is he orders a new fucking ukulele, and this guy's forgotten about, man. Forgotten all about, man. So, here we go, man. First thing we want to do here is just like clean this fucking thing up, man. So let's go into the laboratory, man. Let's not delay anymore. I'll see you there, man. You know what I'm saying? I'll give you a piece of something. 
There's always something here to remind me. Welcome back to the laboratory. You better not be wearing a fucking wire. Because I got a selfie stick with a camera on it making a video for you. Da -da -da -da. So here we are, folks. This is a Harmony 1930s ukulele. People. A little fucked up, man. It's got a little bit of separation. There's some, been some cracking, man. We've been cracking. All the day we've been cracking. Separating the way. Some of it's good, though, man. See if there's any stamps in there, man. Harmony usually has a kind of stamp. See no stamping activity, man. No stamp at all, man. No stamping at all. Hey, man, Steely Dan is, you know what I mean? Have a legacy with me, man. That's old school, man. Now, having a Harmony, branded Harmony, from like the 30s, from the Depression, is kind of hard to find, man. You know what I'm saying? It is, man, because Harmony at the time, the company was bought by Sears, because Sears was making money during the Depression, really. You know what I'm saying? So they bought the company, and most of the ukuleles produced in this time period were all branded Supertone, which was the budget brand for Sears. Some of them weren't even branded. But they all had this kind of style, this look with the fretboard even with the body and stuff, and this little sh shaped headstock and everything, man. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a nice example, man. It's like having like you know a Dan Electro that says Silvertone versus a Dan Electro that says Dan Electro. You know what I'm saying? This is like the Dan Electro. Oh, man. So a special bonus benefit for you to check this out, man. Here's Sears catalog from the Depression, man. Right from the, you know what I mean? Right before the, you know, the New Deal, man. This is an August 1932, the Midsummer Sale catalog. These are rare, man. Finding the shit from the Depression, man. Most of these were used to heat the house, man. Some of the wish books got stashed away, but these kind of things just got thrown away. This is a pretty hefty fucking... You know what I mean? Circular, man. Look at that shit, man. So let's take a look, man, to see if Bobby G knows what he's talking about. Because he talks and he talks and he talks and he talks. See, man, I got a page marked. Oh, look at that, man. We'll take a look at the 30s and just one second, man. You know, old time, man. Look at that, man. $1.89, man. $1.89, you never sounded so fine. See what I mean, man? You see the shape of it? See the headstock? You can even see he's got the same fret markers. You know what I'm My phone's like, hey, man, don't get too close, man. Personal space. Anyway, that's that's the woke agenda with the phones, man. It's got a birch body. You know, this sale bottle, which was under two dollars, has a wine and see, man. Never slip peg, supposedly. You know, so that's like the banjo peg, I suppose. You know what I'm saying? People's, man. Free postage after you pay $2, man. You can get two of them. You know what I'm saying? Delivered for free. Isn't that crazy, man? Isn't that a crazy thing, man? Depression era, man. It's the same thing, man. You see that, man? See how the fretboard's right against the, you know what I'm saying? Right against the body. You know what I'm saying? So it's level with it, just like this. There is no raised fretboard. Just 30 style, man. You know what I'm saying? Early. Wooden nut, man. These are rare, man. Rare to come across that. Usually broken, missing. Parts out, man. You know what I'm saying? Nice solid birch, man. Nice little sunburst action going, too. Man, I'll give you a little, bit, a little bit extra view, man. A little bit extra view, man. This is for the people that like to pause it, man. Look at those dames, man. Look at those dames, man. Dames and babes. This is what you like, man. This is what you want to see, man. It's all right, man. You can admit it, man. I noticed you all, you know what I'm saying? Even the transes are getting into it, man. Check that out, man. This is all about the guitar, people. <laughs> this is a depression era porn, man. Two for a dollar, man. Peace be with you. Let's get this guy cleaned up, man. We're going to take a little piece of... Uh, of the magic erase sponge, and we're just gonna get this schmutz off like the major. Like, there's some, there's a couple little sections on here, man. Well, maybe there's just that one section, this section. Just wanna get the schmutz off, and then we're gonna clean it off with some, this old here furniture polish, you know what I'm saying? 
this is this is the this is the new protege man. He's nice and full, and this is old grandpa teaching teaching junior. I want you to spray like this, sonny. I used to have a little fizzle in me. Now it's just a little bit of a spritz. Fuck man, you're crazy, bro. So it's got it all cleaned off, man. I'll see you in a sheer second, sonny. Come see the softer side of Sears. Peace be with you. And now, right before we continue with the real sheeny, shiny version, man. Or furniture polished up. I want you to record this image in your mind, man. The grime. And you know, the body of this guitar, man. Which has gotten all moldy and sort of stagnated, man. And now, I'll show you the cleaned up version. Alright, so now we got it cleaned off. Now we're kind of working in reverse. Generally, we clean it off at the end. But the reason I wanted to do that is on the back, especially, there was just so much just crud. I was about to put some glue in there, and I didn't want that glue if I, you know, I mean, left it on the crud to, you know, mess with the lacquer, man. It's a very old lacquer. We're talking 30s, man. You know, Bobby G gets a little bit more preventative, you know what I mean, a little bit more careful. And we have an old, old instrument, man. Do -do -do -do. We kept all that pledge away from this area and from the cracks where we're about to pump in a whole bunch of tight burn, man. Little old tight burn, man. We're just going to pump it in there. Take the suction cup, you know what I mean, and just clamp it. Clamp the old countertop. Old countertop. You get that countertop. You've been a bad girl, counter. So anyway, man, you're going to be a bad trans. You've been a bad trans countertop. I don't know his gender, man. It's not specific. So let's, let's get this guy clamped up, man. We're going to have to glue it here. And we're going to have to clamp these with two separate afterwards. Just because that's the way I want to do it this time. Hey. Got a fucking problem? Huh? You got a problem? You want to talk about it? See if they were half clamped. Oh! Oh! I'll let set for a little while, man. Please be with you. My one will be a friend. Oh! Yeah, brojo. Now we got the second half all clamped up, man. Holy Macanoli. Holy Macanucci. Look at that, man. <sighs> Keep on gluing, people. See when this is all dern. You dern? Yeah, I'm dern, Erwin. Oh! Let's get this guy undone, man. He's been clamped for quite some hour now. He's been asleep for nine hours now, Mr. Klein. Alan Klein. Get McCartney to sign this. Listen. Oh, oh, we got some stickage, man. No big people, no whoops. Zero whoops given. So let's talk about the bridge, bridging the gaps of our differences. Oh, oh. All right, people. So, time to bridge the gap, man. Bridge the gap and the deficit, man. This is the new bridge. See, it's got almost the exact same sort of spacing. With the strings, man. With the strings, man. The good news and bad news on this guy is that it's about the same size. The bad news is it's a little bit smaller. You know what I'm saying? Lengthwise or widthwise, whatever way you think that is. And it's a little bit fatter. You know what I'm saying? So where do I put this? Which do I line this up or do I put it right in the middle? So luckily, I actually have an example of one that's the correct original size right here, man. See, that's the original. This is exactly what it looks like in that little Sears catalog, you know what I'm saying? So we can get like a size appreciation gap, you know what I'm saying? What, what to do, man. What to say, man. So you see these are actually made. So this lines up right here at the front exactly with where the saddle should be. See that? So, meaning... That we gotta line this up with this here and center that. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna glue this on. So both of these parts, both the body and the bridge, need a little bit of cosmetic work. A little bit of cosmetic work. First thing we're gonna do is the body. We know that this little ends here, just the little ends, are gonna be shown, man. So showing a little bit of your of your skin there, Shoyley. So let's, you know what I mean, try to touch it up just a tiny smidge of it. 
You know what I'm saying? Just a smidgen bit. I'll see you in a moment. <laughs> All right. See that? Looks perfect. So what I did, basically, was I just took a little mechanical pencil and I drew a line on the side here once I had the front totally lined up perfectly. See those lines there? Took a little bit of acrylic paint, man. You're an icon, man. Took a little needle brush, man. Just carefully, you know what I mean? Just sort of made them disappear. You know what I mean? Made them disappear quite a bit. Then I took some old Zinzer, Shellac, and a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a little tiny... Reverse nipple of this little Chinese soup container. Put equal parts rubbing alcohol and shellac. You know what I mean? And I just sort of did real quick runs over there till I could see, you know, shellac. You know what I mean? And I sort of spot almost perfect. Now that acrylic paint's protected and it's like almost perfect. Perfect to the tuckus, man. So, that's what I'm going to talk about with that part, man. We're all well done with that. Don't want to talk anymore about that. It's your turn, Bridge. Let's fix you up a little bit, my friend. See you in a second. All right, folks. A little cosmetic surgery time for this here Bridge Blank. Now, I got a whole bag here of position dot markers. Black position dot markers. I'm taking two out of that particular bag. Right now, you're going to want to check one side of the dot marker might have like some kind of, you know what I mean, cutting marks and the other side's going to be polished up. You want the polished one up, you know what I mean. We're going to take a little tiny bit of tat bond. You can do any kind of glue, really, that's like permanent, you know. Put it in them huecos, right. And then we're just going to sink these guys in there because we're not going to screw it on. Although it might be a good idea to screw it on if we want to ever take this piece off. We're not gonna do that this in this instance man we're just gonna close up these holes for a cosmetic joint man so i'll see when these are all sunk in there permanently man glued man see you in a minute now ain't that pretty ain't that professional i'd say if i was choosing a profession i'd do this professionally <laughs> so let's glue this guy on here man let's clamp him on here got type bond he's all ready man I'm ready to get hard. I'm ready to get real hard. I'm a professional too, man. Clamp him, you know what I mean, over the shirt, man. Not inside the shirt, man. I'm not married yet. I don't believe in that kind of stuff, huh? You know what I'm saying? I'm a traditional aisleist. See you in a minute. There we go, man. The He-Man clamp. The half-ass rag. The vision of completeness is complete. Half-ass flossed it out too, man. With the chenille string. For you woke ass motherfuckers. Formerly known as a pipe cleaner. Hey man, pipe's not politically correct, man. But the marijuana legalization must happen. Bruh! Same, man. Let's wait for this to cure out, man. Cure it out, man, you cure it all. You all cure it all. See you in a little bit of a moment. Moment meaning some time. So we've been clamped about ten hours now. Let's take this clamp off and let it set for a good 24 hours and let it just totally dry. So let's just totally dry. Sometimes when these guys are under clamping, they don't fully get dry. I don't know why. It's happened a couple times to me. Let's let it set, unclamp, about 24 hours. Again. See you in about a day. One day's time. A harmonious lifetime. See that, man? 130th anniversary. Oh, guys, so I've given it about almost two days. It rained real hard yesterday, you know what I'm saying? I actually put it on top of my hot water heater. This part, like, real, you know, I mean, like two or three inches from the pipe going out of it, you know what I'm saying? And, like, artificial radiated heat, because I was going to leave it out in the sun for a day, but it was just too humid outside. I didn't want to have it sit out in the sun all day. You know? These kind of instruments are very comfortable. Solid instrument. Hear that, man? It's the VC. They're coming in. We're trying to die. In. What do we do? Get down, gum. Listen to me. What do we do now? Well, 
I was looking at these frets. They look like they're pretty good. We're going to have pretty high action. So I'm going to leave those frets for right now. If I need to, you know what I mean, screw with them, I'll screw with them. You know what I mean? I think, what we got to do now, young friends, friendsettes, is to clean this off again with some furniture polish. You know what I'm saying? And maybe we can hit it up with a little bit of mom, man. A little bit of mother's, man. I'll show you what mother's looks like. Man. See that? Mother's looks like. And on this part here, you know where to put on that? I was thinking of putting mothers. And then I thought, maybe we'll put a little bunch of hires on it. Just here. Let's be real careful cleaning up here by the decal. I don't think that decal is sealed. video is gonna make it if you guys can hear me I'll see you when we're all cleaned off if not and there it is people all sheeny shiny it's like glimmer glass coin it's like a collector coin with my friend Jimmy Carter on the on the, on the obverse and the eagle on the reverse Jimmy Carter freedom Act. I actually had to put, I didn't have to, but I did put a little bit of cleaner wax on this because I saw that it was like a finished rosewood board, man. And I put butcher's wax on top of it, man. It's shining like a gymnasium floor in your elementary school the first day of September, man. After the custodian has been in there all summer, drinking schlitz, smoking camels. You know what I'm saying? The old days, man. I remember custodian in my elementary school he was down in his little office by the burglar room all day smoking cigarettes man the whole the whole wing of the school smelled like cigarettes man he unabashedly sit at his desk with a big cigarette in his mouth man you know what I'm saying I'm going out right now to get some more lighters we got to maintain the burglar room <laughs> hey man that's, that's that's 80s man I should get a lawyer man I should look into that shit man Anyway, so, <laughs> we got one component, man. Saddle here. Where's the saddle, partner? You want to saddle up? Or you want to saddle down? Yeah, man. Now, generally in this, you know, sort of situation, I take a piece of neck binding, right? Because it's small, it's easy. Let's put it in there, man. I measure it out. I cut it down to size. I mean, it's perfect. It kind of looks perfect, right? It doesn't look perfect to you. But look at it closely, man. Look at that. There's room enough of two for this saddle, partner. You know what I'm saying, man? You want to you wanna belly up? <laughs> no, I think I'll get my own room, brother. You're a little bit strange, man. So anyhow, this is, <laughs> this is basically, you know what I mean, one of those things that, you can get away with it on the guitar because it's longer. You know what I mean? It's a wide saddle, but this is so small. It's got to just get pushed down, flattened down. It's not going to be a very, very good saddle, man. It's going to affect this, the sound of the ukulele because there's not very much tension going on here. So, I got one of these, man. It's from an acoustic guitar, man. I have a bunch of these, actually, man. And this is the import metric, you know what I mean, size that all these slots are attuned to. So we just got to really cut off these ends here. We can't even see where we got to cut off, man. You know what I'm saying? Already sort of delineated in the plastic design, man. This phone's got like like little seizures it has, man. It like switches to a different lens real quick. See ya? That's like a little seizure, man. Take your meds, my friend. It wasn't approved by the FDA these meds this phone is on, man. It was too woke. So what we're going to do, man, we're going to take the Dream Mile, man. Hey, man. It's like the Green Mile. We have the Dream Mile, man. And we're just going to take off a little bit off the top. You know what I mean? Shave this guy down. See, man, that's all darn, man. That's some work, man. I ain't going to get ready to work, son. See, for all she needs to have that. There it is, man. The Dremel truly is a dream instrument, man. It made, like, you know what I mean? A job that would have taken with like files and sandpaper like three days into like you know what I mean a five ten minute affair you know what I'm saying rough shape then you get at it with the files and the sandpapers and stuff 
Let me shake it up a little bit. It looks perfect. And the perfect saddle will be nice and snug. You know what I'm saying? Will fit like almost like it's almost glued in there, but it's not glued in there. And this is important because it transfers, you know what I mean, the vibrations of the strings onto this actual soundboard of the instrument. So it's very important to have a nice, you know what I mean, saddle that makes good unobstructed contact with the bridge, which make good unobstructed contact with the soundboard. You don't want nothing rattling around. You want everything to be tight. You know what I'm saying? That's why we went the extra mill, man. The extra mill, man. So we got two small steps before our glamour shot activity, man. And that's these two things, which are hand in hand, which this is not really any assembly. It has to be done with this, I don't think. And I've never put one of these on the guitar, these little tiny friction peg things um, before, but I did actually have a little tiny guitar. I think two of them that I bought for my, my daughters when they were little kids that were real small. The body was like a little bit bigger than this. And they had six strings on it, man. It was like a six string ukulele, really, for all intents and purposes. And it had this kind of tuner, and I remember tuning it up a couple times. Like, wait a minute. These kind of suck. <laughs> So let's get this guy all fucking packaged up, man, for the glamour shots, man. Still got a couple more tales to tell, man. A couple more dances to do, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's do it up, man. Don't be jived out, you old turkeys. Don't be a jive turkey. We're not that close to Thanksgiving. Here it is, man. Not bad, man. Not really bad. It's okay, man. I had to actually put a couple rubber grommets behind those tuners there. Some of them needed two, some of them needed just one. Just give it a little bit more friction. Sometimes friction's good. It's good. A little bit of warring, a little bit of hatred. It's the spark that starts the fire. That's what Newton said. <laughs> Did he? I don't know. But anyhow, I can see why they eventually added that raised fretboard. Just kind of awkward. Very primordial. You know what I'm saying? Very, very similar to this old Quattro, man. Which I told you about having acquired it. I bought this right at the docks in Venezuela, man. On, on uh, Isla Margarita. This docks has been there for 400 years. But you see how it's got the frets right in there. You know what I'm saying? Now, the history of the ukulele is sort of very similar to this history. In fact, every civilization in the New World sort of has like a little traditional four-string instrument that were, was supposedly brought to that island sometime in the 1800s by some Portuguese sailors, man. And this is very, very traditionally built. And this is definitely, you know what I mean, in the middle of a bunch of sailors. But, you know what I mean? Hawaii, they seem to claim the same thing as the history of the ukulele. They're saying that in the 1870s, some Portuguese sailor who happened to be like, you know what I'm saying, Jimi Hendrix <laughs> of the tenor guitar. He had like this little chitarra, you know what I'm saying? I guess similar to this. And he came, you know, I guess to the court of the king, you know what I mean, of Hawaii. He was playing his little fucking ukulele you know prototype in front of this motherfucker you know what i mean and the king went crazy and he had like the you know royal luthier who's actually half japanese i believe begin constructing ukuleles immediately you know what i mean for this guy to play who became like the court jester you know what i'm saying and you know for the rest of the you know what i mean the people to learn you know what i mean that was the supposed story you know, i don't know for how true it is it could have been this japanese guy you know what I mean? It showed up there in the 1890s and started building these fucking things, man. Who knows, man? You know what I'm saying? It's possible. But most of the early ones, again, looked like this. And they had this kind of shape. You know what I'm saying? They made a lot of them in the United States. In Philadelphia, Chicago. The Liberty Bell brand. You can still get one made in the United States from the early. You know, way from like 1910 to 1915. 20 bucks. Good condition, I guess, on eBay. The same 10 bucks shipping tops, you know. Looking at a $30 investment. The ones from Hawaii are very, 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 you know, sought after. Especially the early ones. Any of them, really. They command up to like three or four grand, you know what I mean? Depending on condition. 
You can still get them, though, on eBay if you look around like fucked up ones, broken ones. To restore, and after they're restored, it goes from like, you know what I mean, $100 to like, you know, a couple thousand dollars. It was done right, man. Hawaiian made ukulele from the first wave, and Bobby G would love to get one of them, man. After researching it, man. After doing my research, man. Anyway, man, so let's talk about this guy one more time, man, before we play it and send you off on your way. Now, this is the 30s model. We've already talked about that. Well, they added a raised fretboard shortly after the war, and it was made out of plastic. And, of course, in this little hall that we showed you, we got an example of that just to show you the differences. You know what I mean, real quickly. These tuning poles are actually a little bit smaller, man. I think they were using like, those plastic tuners on this. And the fretboard's raised, made out of like uh, plasticine, I believe it was called. Remember Lucy and Sky with Diamonds? Plasticine porters. It's early, like plastic. I believe it was called plasticine, man. It was around 1946, right after the war, they started making, you know what I mean? Innovations over there in Harmony. You can tell by also the insignia, man. See how the insignia has a ball. But one thing, you know what I mean, most ukuleles don't have, and, and harmonies do, they're built like a guitar. See those little, those little cleats in there, man? Most ukuleles don't have that. But all the wooden ones, by harmony in the early days had it. You know what I mean? So they, were, they were like, you know what I mean, using guitar mathematics and science on these kind of guys, man, which is cool. And the weird thing is, is this crude Venezuelan one, which is still being done the way his pappy taught him, you know what I'm saying? 100 years back, they were using those little cleats too, man. Yo uso un poco cleats ahorita, amigo, porque soy muy tacaño. He said, I only use a couple of cleats now because I'm very cheap. Anyway, man, so we've talked, we talked, we talked, man. So Harmony, the Harmony 130th extravaganza continues, man. So I promise you by the end of the year, we'll get this guy working again too, man. By the end of this year, man. Anyway, so let's hear it, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's hear it. We've talked so much, wasted so much of your time. I'd like to say peace be with you. i like to say after I sing to you in a pleasant manner. So there it is, man. The 1930s Harmony Ukulele. Not a bad instrument, you know. He's got its quirks. And this, and this number one string, man. It's in tune, too, man. Anyway, man, I'm not a big fan of ukuleles. Because, like, my hands are kind of big. I mean, this is a very, very small thing. Man, nylon strings were invented, like, right on the brink of the uh, Second World War by DuPont, I believe. Nylon was invented by DuPont. And I believe that it was perfected by the Nazis because they had, like, agreement with, like, oh, with all the Nazi companies over there. They actually had like major like stakeholders of most of the you know nazi companies so they were making money off of the american side nazi company i believe through the war i think to like the end of 1943 they were like basically running the show i think they developed the the, the, the gas you know the gas chamber gas for auschwitz man i believe that that was old dupont man from delaware man but one thing they developed the nazis helped them develop with nylon you know it was really you know what i mean you know, a huge hit right before the war in the 1939 World's Fair. They had the, the, the pantyhose and shit that they made all the women like, oh, this is great, you know what I'm saying? And they're all scandalous while the boys were all fighting, wearing these nylons around. But in 1942, the government's like, all right, nylon, you know what I mean? It's no longer for the public to use, you know what I mean? It's only for the government. They're making parachutes and shit out of it, you know what I'm saying? But right before, I believe right before the war broke out, they started making guitar strings out of nylon, you know what I mean? And there are a couple hundred batches made, different companies, I believe, were working, I guess, with DuPont, you know what I mean? Or without DuPont, you know what I mean? Or the secret was already out for a couple of years. And uh, I think they're even playing them, like, in, in concert halls by, like, 43, 44. You know what I'm saying? The limited number that were out there, these nylon strings. But Segovia got a, a bunch of packs of them. You know what I mean? He's like, this kind of sucked, man. And he worked with, I think, DeAndrea. 
think it was DeAndre. I don't know exactly. I forget, but to perfect the nylon string, you know, I believe in '46, right when the government's like, okay, nylon. And there was like a nylon craziness in the country. Everybody was like, right in the pile. Yes, they're right on there, making all kinds of stuff was coming out. You know what I mean? The nylon. It's a nylon craziness in America. They couldn't get enough plastics. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy, man. So that's when nylon strings took over. You didn't really ever see gut strings after 1946, man. Everything was nylon, man. So that's pretty much the only real difference. You know what I mean? Sound sonic wise, I mean the tuners are pretty much essentially the same. Carry the same function. Maybe you're getting a little stronger sound with this, as opposed to a wooden saddle, plastic thing. So it's kind of like a bi bionic ukulele. You know what I mean? Anyway, man. So let's talk a little bit more. I already talked a little bit. Let's talk a little bit more, man. When I was a kid, I, I used to have this LP called Nick Lowe, Labor of Lust. You know what I mean? It's an American release. And it was one of my top 10 discs. And all my favorite LPs, you know what I mean? In my high school years, you know, I saved up for my jobs, my various little jobs, to buy like versions of that on, on CD, you know what I mean? Some of them were hard to track down because CD was like real big in like the late 80s. I kind of missed the boat. I was a little too young. You know what I mean? And then by the time in like, you know, the early 90s started collecting them, you know what I mean? A lot of the earlier stuff was already out of print again. But I, I remember there's this dude in Jack's, um, it was Jack's music store in Red Bank. Well, I went to high school at Red Bank and I remember I used to hang out there a little bit. He like helped me get like, a, it was just, he said, oh, I can get that as an import. I was in this catalog as an import. It's like, import, yes. It's like $23, something like that. That's like, a day and a half work at Wawa, man. You know what I'm saying? That was a lot of shorties I had to make for that shit. You know what I mean? And I waited for like three months, you know what I'm saying? Oh, almost out of Nick Lowe by the time. I wasn't even interested in listening to Nick Lowe by the time that the disc came in. No, I'm just kidding. I love Nick Lowe. I still, this very day, that's one of my Desert Island discs. And it came in, man, and I went in there. My buddy had to give me a ride to Jackson. You know, I was real excited. You know, you know, you know, I was like, what the fuck? Like missing half the good songs and all kinds of other weird songs. I'm like, what the fuck is this, man? Turns out they tried to break America and they took all the great songs out of all of his early EPs and everything, all the best cuts, and they used the same cover art you know, in America. And it's just called the same thing, but it was not the same album, man. Labor and Lust, the UK version, was not that good compared to the American version, which was incredible. But I liked all the EPs when I went, I got Jesus is Cool and all the original stuff, man. I was like, oh, wow. Everything Nick Lowe. Previous to 1983, man. You know what I'm saying? Party of One was the first bad album he came out with, man. And I was sort of like, mm. he was around here recently. I didn't see him. I wish I did, though. I always, I think like three or four times, like, oh, I was out the door to go see Nick Lowe. And I decided last minute, like, you know what? Maybe I can use that money to go get some guitar. Swap me. Anyway, I love you, Nick Lowe. This song was on Labor of Lust. I don't know if it was on the UK version. I never listened to that CD again. It sucked, but it was on the LP from America. So like this goes. You made me. It's out of my hands, you see. I try hard to be wrong. Sorry about that, people, man. You know what I'm saying? I can't perform for the King of Hawaii, man. I'm not that good. You know what I'm saying? Peace be with you. I fixed it up, though. I got it working again. If somebody really knew how to play it real well, you know what I'm saying? The King of Hawaii would be like, oh, yes. I give you a Hawaiian short roll for that, my friend. This is the King short roll. Peace be with you. Happy harmony, man. 130th time, man. 130 years. Uh, many careers with the harmonies, man.